Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Furlong, and today we're talking chemical bonds. Let's start out with a question. Coal, graphite, and diamond. All three of these things are made up of carbon, but they're so very different from one another. Well, why are they? Well, it depends on how many bonds form between all those carbon atoms. So for instance, with graphite, there's only one bond between every carbon atom. So this makes this a very soft compound. Coal is a little bit harder. That has two bonds between each carbon atom. But diamond has four bonds between every carbon atom, and that makes it the hardest substance on Earth. So you can see, simply by changing how many bonds are between the carbon atoms, that totally changes the compound. We're going to look at two different types of bonds in this video. The first type is called an ionic bond. In an ionic bond, atoms will transfer electrons from one atom to another. So let me give you an example of this. Let's take a look at sodium chloride. Sodium, which is an alkali earth metal, and chlorine, which is a halogen. Now if we were to take a close look at the outer shell electrons, otherwise known as the valence electrons, we see that sodium only has one valence electron. Chlorine has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons. Now remember the octet rule, that atoms want to have a complete outer shell. That means they need eight electrons in the outer shell. Chlorine only needs one more. Sodium, if it could get rid of that one, then it would have only two shells, and then it would have a complete outer shell. And essentially, this is what happens. Sodium is more than happy to donate that one outer shell electron to chlorine, and chlorine is more than happy to accept that outer shell electron. And so when that happens, notice that sodium with two shells has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. Chlorine has, with three shells, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. They are both happy. And this is what holds them together, the sharing of these electrons. And so we take sodium, which is highly reactive, we take chlorine, which is highly reactive, and it makes one of the most stable compounds on the planet, sodium chloride. NaCl. Now one of the things though about ionic bonds is that if we break the bond, the electron is going to stay with that atom. So the donated atom is not going to be given back, which means that one atom is going to end up with an extra electron while the other is going to have fewer electrons. And then we can form what is known as an ion. An ion is any electrically charged atom whether it's positive or negatively charged. So let's take a look at this. Sodium typically has 11, right down here, 11 protons. But it gave away one of its electrons, so it has one, two in the first shell, eight in the second. It only has 10 electrons, which means that sodium is now positively charged. It's an ion. Chlorine, on the other hand, normally has 17 protons, now has two electrons in the first, eight in the second, eight in the third. That gives it 18 electrons. So chlorine is now negatively charged. It also is an ion. How hard is it to break these ionic bonds? That's actually very simple. You just add water. You add water to salt, it dissolves. We separate sodium and chlorine into their individual ions. The second type of bond is called a covalent bond. Here, atoms will share their electrons. Now, a good example of this is water. So water is made up of oxygen, and if we take a close look at oxygen, it has one, two, three, four, five, six electrons in its outer shell, and hydrogen only has one electron in its outer shell, which is its only shell. So another way that atoms can get that complete outer shell to have that octet rule is to share their electrons with one another. So hydrogen needs one more electron and it'll have a complete outer shell. Remember, that first shell can only hold two electrons. Oxygen still needs to have eight electrons in its outer shell. It needs two more. So hydrogen, along with another hydrogen, will combine with oxygen. And let's take a look at what we have. Hydrogen, this hydrogen has one, 
two electrons in its outer shell, so it's complete, it's happy. This hydrogen has one, two electrons in its outer shell, so it's happy. But oxygen has the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons in its outer shell, so it's happy. So once again, we take two very reactive substances, hydrogen and oxygen, and we make the most stable compound on the planet, H2O, or water. And yes, it does tend to look a lot like Mickey Mouse. But here's the thing. If we break a covalent bond, the electrons stay with the original atoms. So oxygen will have, along with its eight protons, still has eight electrons. And hydrogen, with one proton, also has one electron. And that's the same for both of these. Of course, what really would happen is that these two hydrogens would combine with one another to form H2, and oxygen would actually form with another oxygen to make O2, because hydrogen and oxygen can't be by themselves ever. But I digress. So that's just a very quick look at uh, the two types of bonds. We're going to be working some more on this in class, and I can't wait to see you then.